Hi, in this video, we are going to see how we can develop a logistic regression model using a bunch of SQL statements. To achieve this, we are going to use BigQuery ML, which is a service as part of Google Cloud Platform. So let's get started. The very first thing is I am in the Google Cloud Console. Uh, you can go to console.cloud.google.com. And in case if you don't have Google Cloud Console account, you can just quickly register and there is a $300 credit uh, that is given to you uh, just to try out Google Cloud products. It's valid for one year. You can go ahead and uh, make use of it and run this exercise. And apart from that, there is also monthly free quota available. And this, uh, this particular access can be run within the monthly uh, free quota itself. So uh, what I'm going to do is once I'm in the Google Cloud Console, I'm going to go into a product called BigQuery. So I'm going to go and select BigQuery. Now BigQuery is basically an uh, serverless or fully managed uh, data warehouse that uh, Google, Google provides. Uh, it, it takes care of all the administration, all the scaling of uh, the backend systems and basically allow us to focus purely on the business logic and it is ANSI SQL compliant. So basically you can just run SQL statements to achieve your uh, task and it does it in scale. You can access uh, terabytes and petabyte of data using BigQuery in completely low response Low response time. When I say low, it's not going to be a real time, but it's near real time uh, response time that you will get. So basically what I am uh, is I am in Google BigQuery on the left hand side you can see the available data sets. Uh, I have a project I am using a project called Sri Vatsan underscore project I don't have any data set within that. Apart from that you have a lot of public data sets also available. You can go and play around with the public data set. Now what I am going to do is I am going to bring my own data set. I will show you how to do that. And the next part is what I am going to do is this is the editor that you have where you can run your SQL queries and then I am going to run a bunch of SQLs and we are then going to develop a machine learning model using a bunch of SQL queries again. So let's first get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Srivatsan project and create a data set first. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to create a data set called bank. I'm going to use like a UCI machine learning repository bank marketing data set. I'll show you the data set. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, so I'm just creating a data set called a bank. Uh, it's just like a folder you can assume. That's what I've done over here. So once I've created the data set now, I'm going to click on the data set and I'm going to add tables to it, right? And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on the plus sign. The plus sign is basically to create a table. And once I create a plus sign, it will show me other menu. In the menu, I have multiple options. I can create an empty table. I can upload a data. I can basically load data from my Google Drive or Google Cloud Bigtable. I'm going to use Google Cloud Storage now. Google Cloud Storage is an object storage environment where you can upload your data set. So I am uh, basically giving Google Cloud Storage and I'm going to give the bucket name. The bucket name is nothing but the folder name where my file is stored. So I'm just going to like say like three iPhone data set. That is my folder name and the file name is bank iPhone full dot CSV. And basically uh, this bank iPhone full is nothing but if you search for UCI machine learning bank marketing data set, you will get the data set link. You can just download and either upload it directly or you can just store it in your Google Cloud storage. So once I I am created this. I'm going to go and select the project name where I want to create the table. I am telling Srivatsan project is the project name and within that I created the data set name called bank and then basically I have I'm telling the table type as native table. Native table is basically it will create a local table. Um, it will import all the data and create a an, uh, table for us. External table is it will just create a link to the file in Google Cloud Storage. And then I'm going to give a name for the table. I'm just telling like bank underscore marketing as the uh, table name. Then I'm telling like auto detect the schema and input parameters. So basically it's going to read the header and then automatically detect the schema. Uh, what are the column names and everything. And also it's going to uh, run a quick scan and see like what is the data type. Uh, everything internally right and other options are same only thing click on the advanced options in the advanced option there's a delimiter even though our csv file uh, the input data is semicolon separated so i'm just going to say custom and i'm going to give the delimiter as semicolon and then I am telling create table. I'll show you the data and all. So, but this or once you click on create table, it is going to uh, create a table for you once it is done. 
uh, yeah now you can see the bank marketing table is available let me close other tabs too many tabs open yeah so this is the bank marketing data set and you can see basically you have all the columns that's a age job marital uh, status education default there are a lot of uh, columns and the target column is why uh, basically uh, the idea is whether it's a, whether a customer will subscribe to a term deposit product or not it is a yes or no yeah it is basically an yes or no field it's a binary classification problem and this is my target uh, variable and all other variables are attributes of the customer like whether he has a housing loan or whether he has an uh, what is the balance in his current account what is his education level what is the last campaign that was run previous contact whether he subscribed or not there are a lot of information but for this purpose let's uh, more focus on how we can create a model using uh, SQL statement uh, I'm not going to go into the details of data analysis and all uh, that is still required and very important uh, before we do any kind of modeling and feature engineering but I just want to demonstrate how you can create a model and we will also see how we can do feature engineering just using SQL uh, so that we can uh, we can we can offline do the analysis and then uh, go back and build a very robust model. There are a lot of ways within BigQuery uh, for you to uh, quickly explore the data and do analysis as well. I will give a, I will show you about I will show about that, but I'm not going to go into the detail of it. But if you if you click the link on the top or check the video description, I have attached a detailed video on how you can do analysis on a data set using a Google BigQuery. You can go and watch it. It does all the details that are required to build dashboards, to tell story out of your data and everything, right? For, for this purpose, I'm going to focus more on uh, the capability of BigQuery or on creating model using SQLs. So I have this, you can go there and you can quickly preview the data. This is how your data looks like, uh, basically the age, job column and all the uh, parameters. And um, basically like finally you will have like an column Y, true or false, whether the customer subscribe to the term deposit or not. And our idea is to build a model to see in future based on the customer attribute, will he subscribe to a term deposit? So let me go to now query editor. You can click on compose uh, new query. And uh, what you can do is whatever uh, preview that we, that we uh, saw now, I can also run like SQL statements and I can quickly check it out. I'm going to copy and paste some SQL statements so that I don't want to type it now. And you can see, basically I'm selecting all the columns that are there from the Srivatsan iPhone project. That is the project name. Uh, bank is the data set name and the bank marketing is basically my actual table name. So I can select this, I can quickly run. I can see the same data uh, that you saw using preview. You can, I'm just running a SQL now. You can run any ANSI complaint SQL. It supports ANSI 2011. Okay, uh, I can also check my target distribution on how it is. So let me change this query to check the target distribution. So what I'm doing is I'm telling select Y as target. My Y is my target variable and doing a count of star and grouping it by Y. So what it will do is in this case, it will give me the distribution of my target record in the yes and no class. Now, if you see over here in the in the basically true class, we have only five to eight, nine records. And in the no class, we have around 39,000 odd records. So it's a highly imbalanced data set, right? So we will see how to handle imbalanced data set as well. So this is how you can quickly check and you can also like do a lot of analysis. You can also click on explore data and it will take to take you to Google Data Studio where you can take all this data, you can slice and dice, you can create dashboards and everything. As I said, I have covered that detail in my another video. The link is in the video description. You can go and uh, check it. Okay, the next what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, create uh, three copies of the data set. I need to uh, split the data set into train, evaluation and uh, the test data set, right? So for that, what I'm doing is I am, if you see the, the, if you see this query, I have the actual inner query that we saw. The only thing I have done is I have added an uh, field with a random variable. It's called a split field. So basically what it does, it will generate a random number for each row between zero to one. And I have, what I am doing is I'm assuming that the number that's are generated will be uniformly distributed. Okay. And we can, we will, we will test it out whether the data is really uniformly distributed and everything. This is like a random number generator or random sampling that you can call it. But if you want pretty, 
much like a stratified sampling that you can code it as well in SQL. But for this purpose, I'm just going to do just random sampling. That is what I've done in my inner clause. Now inner clause will generate a random variable between zero and one. In the outer clause, what I'm doing is I'm selecting all the columns that are there over here. And then I'm putting a case one statement. I'm telling when the split field is less than 0.8, right? Then use it for training. Basically, I'm telling 80% of the data use it for training. And when it's equal to 0.8, that is like basically uh, the 0 0.9, right? When it's equal to 0.8, 0 to 0.7 will go into less than 0 0.8 will go into the training. 0.8, that is 10% of the data will go into evaluation and greater than 0.8, the data when I say 0 to 1, it's going to be between 0 to 0.9. So the 0.9 variable that another 10% will be in the prediction. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a table which adds one more uh, column to it, calling training, uh, tra uh, naming the data set as training evaluation prediction. So if I run this, you can basically see the output. This is how it looks like. Here you have all the columns. Apart from all of these columns, basically it has generated a final variable called data frame. I have named this as uh, data frame here, end as data frame. And you can see training prediction evaluation. So basically uh, I'm splitting the data into three frames. My training frame, prediction frame and evaluation frame. The only thing is every time you run this output, it's going to generate a different training evaluation prediction frame because I am just using a random number. There is no way for us to basically uh, tell in this case uh, some seed number or something which we use in our machine learning so that the split is always same. The best thing is to use a hash function on the column and then uh, do it by yourself. There are a lot of other functions available. But for this, let's stick on to uh, uh, stick on to basically like uh, the random split that we do. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically take this data and then I am con going to convert it into a uh, table for me. Uh, so here I'm just finding the query. I'm going to load it into a different table. And if you see basically what I'm doing is, okay, I'm creating like bank marketing view. Uh, I'm just going to rename it. What I did is I'm going to change the view to table. I want to create a permanent table because when I create a view, it is still going to create just a link to the internal query. And every time I do my, uh, do my train split and everything is going to generate a different version of the uh, different version of the row. So I'm just creating a permanent table so that whatever uh, whatever basically train test and split we have, it's going to just load it into the table. So here I'm telling like create or replace table bank dot marketing underscore tab all the column name and the same query that we saw. Uh, the query has not changed. So once I run this, it's going to create a table for me. I hope you understand the difference between table and view, right? When I create a view, the data is not persisted. Only the link to the query is persisted and every time the query is ran. Uh, so since I'm using a random split, every time uh, basically when I query the view, I'll get a different output. So it's not deterministic. By creating a table, I am persisting uh, this version of data so that I can use it multiple times and I still have the same uh, train test split uh, over here. Now you can see the new table is created called marketing tab. Right now I have that I can quickly check how my data distribution is again uh, by data frame in this uh, in this case. So what what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to I'm telling like select data frame comma target uh, count of star and then I'm grouping by data frame and target and then ordering by data frame. So for each data frame, it is going to show how much of uh, yes and no variable are that, right? So we just want to make sure our data is properly uh, split across all the data frame. So in this case, for the evaluation data frame, I have like 4,016 false record and 514 and prediction is 6090 and 825 and training is uh, 29816 is false and true is 3950. So almost looks like uh, the split is around like some 11 or 12% or 13% or whatever it is, but it looks pretty consistent. So uh, the, the, the split underneath is uh, uh, pretty consistent for us. Now I'm going to go and create my model. I have my train test split. The first first model that I'm going to create, I'm not going to build any intelligence or feature engineering. I'm just going to go and run a pretty simple model. So here what I'm doing to create a model, I am just telling create or replace model. 
So rather than writing a bunch of Python code or anything, you are just creating a SQL. And when you want more flexibility, it's better to go to the Python programming or R programming or any other programming that you are comfortable with. But if you want to just quickly run, get the output, iterate around with SQL and you're not comfortable with programming, this is a good option to do. So here what I'm doing is I'm telling create or replace model. I am uh, basically giving uh, a name to this particular model. And then uh, I am again telling the model to be created in the bank data set, same place. And then I'm giving my options. In the options I am telling, I want the model to be logistic regression. Auto class weights is true because we saw our data is imbalanced. We want to basically uh, create some weights for our, um, our lowly represented classes. Um, basically, if you're aware of class weights, that's what it does. It's going to outweigh the uh, low, uh, low represented classes for us so that the model uh, understand it's like imbalanced and uh, it tries to classify the uh, minimal class also better, right? That's what it is about. And I'm telling my label column is target. In the, I, I, if you see my query, I created Y as target. So target is my label column. And then I am doing a select clause from my table that I created called marketing tab and the data frame as training this time. So I'm just using the training data frame to create my model. I'm giving this except data frame because data frame is just a variable I used to uh, used to basically separate out my data. I don't need that for modeling. So whatever I give in except will be not used for modeling purpose. So I'm using all the columns except for data frame and I'm using training and I'm going to run it now. So uh, this is going to uh, run for some uh, uh, 50, 40, 50 seconds and it's going to uh, create a model. So while this is running, next what I'm going to do is I am going to basically get the parameters of the model. So I'm going to run a bunch of queries uh, to get info on this training, uh, to get the feature info, to check all the coefficients and all. Uh, so I'm going to uh, basically run a bunch of queries after this completed. Let me just wait for this to get completed. And you can see basically over here, uh, yeah, this has completed now. You can uh, click on go to model uh, and you can see how the model is. Basically, when you click on go to model, you will get the training tab where it shows the loss is decreasing. Uh, the number of iterations that uh, ran, it ran five iterations and each iterations, how much time it took and the learning rate and everything. You can also go to evaluation tab and basically see the ROC is around 0.75. The log loss is this one. This is the position recall. Uh, the position recall is not correct because it, the uh, threshold is kind of... Uh, at zero so you want to move the threshold to maybe like say uh, 50 or something like that and then check it out so this is how it looks like the accuracy is good but the recall is 53 but the position is 32 so if you see the confusion matrix you can see like 85 percent is classified correct and false but in uh, the true only 54 percent is uh, classified correctly right now we didn't do anything to the model we are let's see like after doing feature engineering if you are able to get better model but for now what we will do is we will uh, go back and we will check the model output so you can check it visually i'm going to run a bunch of sql i have three sequels the first sql what i'm going to do is i'm just going to run select star from ml training info model and the bank marketing model that i have created over here right uh, once i run this it is going to show me the training details so it has run for five iterations over here if you see this table it has run for five iterations and the zeroth iteration where, where we got like uh, 68 loss and then the loss last was 51 right you can basically see the different learning rate that was used the second query what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the uh, feature info of uh, this particular model it's going to show all the features that were there and uh, it's also going to show basically the distribution of data so age what is the distribution now job is a categorical column so it is taking number of categories and it's going to show all the info for each and every feature so it's basically giving more like a descriptive statistics and finally i'm going to get the weights of the model so i'm just telling select star from ml dot weights and the model name so now, one, now I, once i run this it's going to basically show all the coefficients of the model it's going to show all the weights that are used in the model. It's basically like the age, what is the weight, the job within each category. Uh, the When you run the model, we are just passing string column. 
the uh, the model create model that we did takes care of handling missing values take care of um, uh, take care of basically doing a one not encoding and all the things it takes care of it now we can do it ourselves as well uh, and that's better because we want to have more control of it that i will come to it but for now this this is all the info that we have got now we have got we have created the model we have basically uh, got all the model info we checked the graph for model and all i can now go and evaluate the model so now what i am doing is i am just doing the select star from ml dot evaluate the model that i created created and i am using the evaluation data frame this time internally so it's going to rather than using the training data frame which i use for training i am just going to use the evaluation data frame so i'm going to take this and i'm going to run it and here you can see like how the model is performing once it's completed you can basically see the accuracy is 81% but ours is a imbalanced class the recall is 52% and the precision is 30 the recall is what we will be more focused on uh, because we want to make sure uh, the the correct uh, uh, the users are targeted right in our case we want to make sure the marketing campaign is effective and the user accept the term deposit so that's what we are going to look at now the recall is only 52% and i can also before going into feature engineering uh, if you want to use this model to predict right what i can do is i can just change that ml dot evaluate to ml dot predict over here and i am using the data frame prediction and once you basically run the prediction you are going to uh, get all the columns with the uh, predicted value so if you see over here this is the predicted target true and you have the probability score and all the columns and everything right it's telling like for each column true what is the predicted probability for false what is the predicted probability so uh, you can get all those details of it now uh, the model is not great uh, the recall is pretty less you can also adjust the threshold and you can uh, get a better recall but let's see like what happens if we do a feature engineering and now if you notice i have not done any data analysis and all i just want to show the capability of this particular tool we still have to apply all the uh, data analysis steps statistical steps and everything to understand the data better right but now in this case uh, i'm just going to randomly run some feature engineering right i'm not going to really go into the data analysis phase uh, at this stage right so here what i am doing is i am doing the same create or replace model i have given a different model name called marketing underscore model underscore feet earlier was marketing underscore model i just added underscore feet and i am calling it transform function so this transform function is where you can uh, do some uh, feature engineering now you can do any amount of feature engineering but here what i am doing is i am just uh, doing couple of them i have a age column i am bucketizing the age column into five buckets so first thing in the i am telling my ml dot quantile bucketizer uh, to bucketize my age column into five buckets so that's what i am doing over here the second thing i am doing is i am doing a feature cross so in the feature cross basically i am uh, taking the job and education and then i am creating a feature cross of job and education because bo both of this are uh, uh both of this in this case are kind of uh, categorical value and rather than doing individual one not encoding i am also creating a feature cross of job and education because job and education are kind of uh, related in not in all cases but uh, based on your education your job can be in the similar field so i am just taking a guess over here and then i am just calling this ml feature cross and then i am selecting all other target as it is i am also dropping two columns here apart from the data frame i don't want the campaign and derock column so i am going to drop it but other other columns are selected as it is and then i am telling my model type is same logistic regression auto class wise is true and then my input table target column is target and then uh, the data frame as training so the only thing i did is i dropped two columns over here i had it some kind of feature engineering you can do any feature engineering you want again as i said i'm just doing some random feature engineering uh, based on some guest team i have not done any data analysis right so let me run this see the idea is i want to get quick hypothesis over here 
But at the same time, when I go and build a production capability, I will go into the details and go for each feature and analyze it and then do the feature engineering properly. Uh, at this stage, it's more of capability uh, that I'm trying to show. So it's running, it's it's pre-processing, it's, it's going to pre-process the transform unit, it's going to build the model, and then it's finally going to uh, get the same um, uh, finally, we are going to get the same information as we got earlier. Now, this time the model is created. Now, let me click on go to model and uh, let's go to training. You can see basically the losses coming down, the iterations uh, over here, the learning rate and everything. Let's go to the evaluation this time. And the ROC is 76 now. And then uh, let me go back uh, to uh, around uh, 0.5 threshold and let's see let me go back to 0.5 actually moving the cursor is little difficult yeah now if you come down you can see basically uh, it was 8515 it has become 8020 uh, because like when once we try to uh, get the two class better the false class will definitely get impacted uh, it will have a, a opposite effect um, but my true class was earlier somewhere like 56 or something 55 45 or something like that now it's 60 40 so the true class is what we are focusing on looks uh, better now let's go back uh, to the query and uh, maybe uh, run the same uh, same like uh, 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 details that we ran earlier uh, get the training info uh, training info is going to be almost like similar but in this time i'm using the model feed uh, not the model so training info i didn't select the whole query let me run the training info it's going to show like uh, if you see over here the loss has been decreasing from 68 to 55 that's what i can see over here i can quickly go and get the feature info and this time if you see the feature info will not be the raw features but the transformed features so let me uh, quickly go over here and in this case oh uh, sorry i'm sorry in this case uh, uh, in the in the feature info it will be still raw feature uh, but in the weights it will be uh, the transform feature so it's still going to use the raw feature because the raw feature is used to uh, create the derived feature in the weights it will show the derived feature here basically if you see in the bucketized THC server derived feature you can see there are five bins and for each bin bins what is the weight uh, similarly for job education uh, we had done a feature cross so for each of the job and education it is basically creating a feature cross and it is giving us all the scores that's what it has uh, done over here i can go and uh, quickly evaluate this particular uh, this particular model like we did earlier to see how the output looks like i can run evaluate on this and you will get basically the final accuracy has come down to 77 from 81 and uh, since it's an uh, imbalanced class accuracy is not the right metric but the recall has improved from 51 to 57 uh, so uh, we are still work to do we have to go back and iterate multiple feature engineering step uh, do data analysis and everything but i uh, wanted to quickly show how you can uh, build a logistic regression model just by using bunch of sql statements and once you click on this model like i'll take one of the model you can export the model this export model will give you a scikit learn model you can just deploy it anywhere you want right so it was very easy for us to create the model it will also include your feature engineering step and everything so whatever you do in the sql you can just take it and deploy it once you know you have an model that is uh, ready for production so that's about it thank you very much